Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us here for Creme 2 News First at 4. I'm Whitney Ward. It has now been three weeks since the murders of four University of Idaho students in Moscow, and there have been no arrests for the killings of Madison Mogan, Kaylee Gonsalves, Zana Kernodal, and Ethan Chapin. Just a few hours ago, the Moscow Police Department cleared up more misinformation on this case. Creme 2's Mark Hanrahan is joining us here now to break down some new details just released by investigators this afternoon. Mark. Good evening, Whitney. 24 days. That's how long it's been since the four college students were found stabbed to death inside their off campus home in Moscow, Idaho. The case has captured national, even international attention and rumors continue to circulate online about evidence and suspects. The Moscow Police Department continues to battle disinformation spreading in this case and tonight they are clearing up rumors about where Kaylee's dog was found inside the home and an alleged stalker Kaylee might have told friends about. Investigators say Kaylee's dog was in the house when they arrived to the scene, but the dog was not found in the room with any of the victims. Police say the dog was not in a room where the crimes were committed and there was no evidence that it had gone into those parts of the house. The dog was taken to a local shelter and it was later released back to family. Next, the claims that Kaylee had a stalker. Investigators say they looked into an incident in mid-October, which is where they believe the stalker claims originated that Kaylee made the friends. Now, according to police, Kaylee was at an unidentified local business. Two men were seen inside attempting to pick up women. One of those men appeared to follow Kaylee out to her car, but did not make any contact with her, according to police. Investigators say both men have been investigated and cleared as suspects. Here's what Idaho State Police's public information officer had to say about that today. And can you speak to that at all? Have you guys investigated claims of a stalker for Kaylee? And, and where does that stand? Yes, we have. And uh, today we were able to um, come out that we had found a situation, an incident occurred at a local business where uh, it appeared that a male had followed Kaylee through the store and then as well possibly out to her vehicle. It didn't appear that there was any contact that was made between the two. Um, we have investigated that. We have talked to the individuals involved and we do not believe in any way that they're, they're actually uh, part of this uh, actual crime. Police are also asking for more information about Xana and Ethan's activities the night of the murders. Police are looking for any insight into their movements and behaviors between 9 p.m. and 1.45 a.m. when police say the two arrived back at the house. Police say they believe the pair were at a Sigma Chi fraternity party at a, that night, and the house is just a short walk away from the home on 1112 King Road where they were killed. Any detail, no matter how small they say, could be the key to this case. And finally, I asked Aaron Snell, the communications director for ISP, if they feel better about their case today than they did on day one. He said, absolutely, they do feel better about their case right now. Meantime, if you have any information about Ethan and Xana the night they were killed, you're urged to contact the Moscow Police Department tip line. It's 208-883-7180. You can also send an email to the address right there on your screen. Look what happened out there at Camp Hope. They went into that neighborhood and stole everything that wasn't tied down. You're going to do the same to us here? This morning, protesters gathering in front of the Catholic Charities New Catalyst Project, which is located in West Spokane. This is at the Old Quality Inn on Sunset Hill. They were protesting Governor Jay Inslee's visit today to tour that new facility. The community has been against the new homeless housing project in that location since it was announced earlier this year. It is a multi-million dollar investment from the Department of Commerce to help transition people off the streets and into more permanent housing. This morning, Washington Governor Jay Inslee was here in Spokane. He joined other state leaders in a tour of that uh, Catalyst project ahead of its grand opening. Creme 2's Amanda Rowley was there as well. She gives us our first look inside. The Catalyst building project is expected to open later this week and provide 100 beds. This is one big step toward closing the homeless camp near I-90. Today, Governor Jay Inslee came to visit and we got a sneak peek inside. The goal of the Catalyst Housing Project is to provide temporary housing that will help people transition into more permanent housing. Participants at the Catalyst will have access to a team of case managers and peer specialists on site. It's a method that's bringing resources to the people staying there. But making that $25 million investment that the state of Washington is making in Spokane County is being done in a smart way that's going to have long-term results for this community. Governor Inslee stood with the Department of Commerce, Department of Transportation, and Catholic Charities this morning. He says the Catalyst is a smart investment in addressing the homeless crisis in Washington state. 
Catholic Charities has eight full-time security officers. CEO Rob McCann says there will be at least two officers on site at all times. Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. And nearby homeowners wanted to make sure the governor and other state leaders are aware that they do not support this opening project. Protesters gathered around 30 minutes before Governor Inslee arrived. Protesters said they feel left out of conversations and they never wanted that catalyst project in their neighborhood. I'm not in favor of all this money being spent in secret without due process, first off. And then I'm also um, disappointed that the money's not being invested in our community and our neighborhood. It's a forgotten neighborhood and it would be better to have more money invested in the neighborhood and things that make it better, like schools. It'd be great if my son could go to a public school in my neighborhood. However, with or without neighborhood support, Catholic Charities will begin moving people into its new shelter that begins this week. Krem 2 did speak with protesters who, again, say this is not the end of their fight. Some of those people against the project now planning to continue to search for ways to protest and share their voices. All right, a lot of snow out there on the ground today. Let's talk weather. We certainly got a break from the snow, at least for a little while. There was new snow on the roads today, so hopefully you didn't have too much trouble. However, we know that the snow that's on the ground is not going anywhere. Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Lagoo joining us now as we talk about really cold temperatures in the forecast. You know, Whitney, it's one of those ones where uh, last Friday I was talking about the possibility of snow Sunday later in the day. Yep. And then I didn't look at the forecast over the weekend. <laughs> and so as four o'clock hit, I was going, oh no, was I dead wrong? No. Yeah, so then Not it started all. happening and I went, oh man, now I got to shovel again? <laughs> I know, it's the worst. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so a couple days of a break with the shoveling and then we're back to it. Right now, we're dry ish. We have moisture in the low levels of the atmosphere. That's going to play a big role in fog formation as we get into the day tomorrow. So for now, not much going on. Our low sits pretty far down to the south. That means we're cut off from any sort of moisture and we're not going to see anything. So a little bit of a stagnant weather pattern is kind of our setup here. We have a small stationary boundary at play. That means a couple of stray light mountain showers are possible, but what we really are going to see is an overall dry pattern. Look, it, it's not much. It's Mount Spokane. It's some of those places that just tend to get a little more snow than others. You're gonna see some light flurries tomorrow. Then as we get into Wednesday, we wind up drying out slightly, a, a slight dry out is what we'll call it. And then snow returns kind of overnight scattered in nature. And then we see that chance of snow return Thursday. We're talking big time snow Thursday night. Not as big as the last storm, but I think right now the model saying anywhere between two and four inches in Spokane. I don't think that's out of the question. Whitney. Hmm. Okay, Jeremy, thank you very much. Well, two wash dot plows are out of commission right now because of drivers hitting those plows while they were out trying to treat the roads. When the snow started falling last night, wash dot was out early to get ready to plow the interstates and the area highways. But they say not long after that, right around 1 a.m., um, an accused drunk driver crashed right into that plow. This was on State Route 904 near Four Lakes, and obviously there's a lot of damage there, especially to the plow fender and, of course, to the other car as well. The plow's fuel tank caused a fuel spill then to close traffic while they tried to clean that up. WSP says the driver of that car had minor injuries and was arrested for DUI. 11.30 p.m. Sunday night, um, plow truck was on I-90, plowing and treating the roadway, saw a vehicle coming up, it lost control, ran into the fuel tank in the front of the plow, ended up uh, causing a pretty significant leak to the fuel tank of the truck. That spilled roughly 30 gallons of diesel onto the roadway and shoulder. Um, Department of Ecology had to be called. Both drivers taken to the hospital. Uh, thankfully, no injuries and the driver was arrested for DUI. So why is it so dangerous to pass those snow plows? We asked WashDOT to explain what those plow drivers actually experience behind the wheel. In uh, nighttime conditions, if it's snowing, it's already reduced visibility as it is. So it's just difficult to see. Uh, and so drivers need to pay attention to our trucks out there. You know, two strikes, now both of those trucks are out of service. That's two less vehicles that are gonna be on our roadways for at least the next several days, if not longer than that. 
And this wasn't the only plow that actually got hit this morning. Look at that. Another plow was hit on State Route 28 in Lincoln County. Investigators say that driver was simply going too fast for conditions and rear ended the plow. Washdot says these plows are now out of commission indefinitely until they can be repaired, which, as he just said, that's one less resource for this week's anticipated snowfall. Tonight, Spokane police still are looking for a man who caused a shelter in place order for the Logan neighborhood yesterday. Police say they were responding to a call about a man and woman fighting near Illinois and Morton. This is in North Spokane. When they arrived, they confronted the man who appeared to have a gun. The man approached police with that weapon and officers say that is when they fired off one round. The man dropped the gun and ran. Officers were able to retrieve the weapon and that's when they say they discovered it was actually a fake gun. Spokane Camp Police Chief Craig Meidel says they don't know right now if the suspect had another weapon. That's standard protocol, though, for them to respond that way. The Spokane County Sheriff's Office is now taking over this investigation, and they are still searching for that man. They don't know if he was hit by the round that officers fired. North Idaho residents reported hearing a loud boom and seeing a flash of light on Saturday night. So the cause of this boom, still a mystery actually. This is video from a viewer the moment that it happened. Yeah, what, what is that? It's hard to kind of see what that looks like. Obviously, it's a pretty bright flash right there along the horizon. The Kootenai County Sheriff's Office says they didn't find the source for the sound or the light. They concluded it was likely a sonic boom in relation to aviation or space.